So um, for heart valve disease, I think uh, for the last 40 years, um, the mainstay of treatment has been open heart surgery. And the surgeons have really got very good at it. Um, unfortunately, for quite a significant uh, proportion of patients, um, open heart surgery actually is quite risky for them. For example, in the very elderly patients or patients with multiple uh, diseases or comorbidities. And that really drove a need for some less invasive uh, or non-surgical way to treat heart valve disease. And I think in uh, the recent years, one therapy that's really come to the front uh, or to the fore is uh, what we call a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Now, the aortic valve is a valve that uh, kind of leads the blood out from the heart to the rest of the body. Okay, so everything needs to come out through this valve to the rest of the body as the heart you know, squeezes the blood out. And uh, in many patients who become very, as we grow older, this valve tends to degenerate with time. Uh, and when it becomes severely narrowed, patients uh, develop symptoms, uh, become short of breath, they have, they have chest pain or even uh, fainting spells. And we know that if you don't replace this aortic valve uh, for these patients, their expected survival will be no more than 50% at two years, which is a fairly lethal uh, condition. So um, in 2002, the first uh, inhuman uh, transcatheter valve was performed whereby we could change this valve uh, through excess in the groin, just as we perform a heart uh, angioplasty or we put stents in the heart, in the heart arteries and then deliver a new valve a new uh, tissue valve to this uh, to replace the aortic valve, which is right somewhere right here. And uh, in the and since then, the technology has progressed very rapidly, and uh, we have now two major players on the market. So what, so what you see here is the uh, Edward Sapien uh, valve I'm holding in my left hand, and this is the uh, core valve uh, device I'm holding in my right hand. Of course, this is without the actual valve leaflets. And if you will look here in this bottle, which is still with formalin there is a uh, actual valve tissue inside. So what we do with this technology is that we compress this device down. As you can see, I can squeeze it down. This will be then put into a uh, big uh, plastic catheter or a tube that will then lead from the groin, which is you know, in a patient, it will be somewhere here. And we will then pass this uh, catheter with this valve back towards the uh, diseased aortic valve. And we will then kind of deploy the valve to replace the old one okay and this is done without the need to cut open the chest and it is done on a beating heart and can even be done under local anesthesia for some patients that are able to uh, you know, obey commands and follow us uh, follow instructions during the case so this has really revolutionized the treatment of uh, aortic of aortic valve disease uh, within about since 2007 when both companies achieved the CE mark which is a European approval about 150,000 of these procedures have been performed worldwide. And I think as the technology evolves, there are better valves coming on the market and both companies have also come up with better generation and improving valves. I think this really perhaps one day will completely replace the need for open surgery to replace uh, the aortic valve in, in many, many patients. So the other valve that we are concerned with uh, mostly is uh, the mitral valve, which is uh, you know this valve here. And the mitral valve allows blood to come back from the lungs to come into the left atrium, which is the upper chamber, and then go down to the left ventricle before it is pumped out through the aortic valve. Now, two things can happen with the mitral valve. Either it becomes uh, severely narrowed, a condition we call mitral stenosis. And uh, it, is, it used to be very common in Singapore when, it was, when we were a poorer country. And this is the, the reason for that being mitral stenosis is caused mainly by rheumatic fever, which is seen mainly in the developing countries. And when patients have this uh, valve that becomes uh, quite narrowed, they become breathless and then they, you know, effort tolerance becomes quite limited. Um, again, for this uh, uh, valve, we can perform a simple ballooning for the valve, but where we come again from the groin and we come across from the, actually from the right side of the heart into the left and then we pass a balloon across to dilate this mitral valve. And this has been shown to be a very good therapy and a very uh, uh, they get very good outcomes and the results can be quite sustained. Uh, although saying that the number of patients that we see nowadays are getting, you know, is getting much fewer because uh, the country is, uh, you know, getting uh, richer. But we still see this condition in many patients in Southeast Asia, where the country, when in developing countries around Southeast Asia. So what we see more commonly nowadays in Singapore and most of the developing or developed world is 
a condition called mitral regurgitation where this mitral valve becomes leaky. And again, um, the previous uh, method of treating this valve would be open chest surgery to either repair the valve or replace the valve completely. Uh, but we again now have a uh, non-invasive method where we pass a device again from the uh, groin and we come up from the right side of the heart and we cross into the left side. And what we do is we apply a clip to the leaflets of the valve to clip the valve together. And this is simply called the mitral clip. So imagine that the valve leaflets are now incompetent where it, it flops open and you cannot close. Then we apply a clip just to clip the center portion to make it coag better and reduce the leakage. So these are some of the non-surgical methods of treating valve diseases that have come up in the last 10 years or so that may uh, give patients a wider range of therapeutic options.